This is the new KISS Ultra version 3 and it is an updated version of the KISS Ultra flight controller that not only adds USB-C but also makes a number of nice little changes and improvements. Now this is going to be a bit of an overview because it's winter. I'm not going to be able to fly in this video because it hasn't stopped raining for weeks but more than anything I just want to give you a bit of an overview of what has changed with the new KISS Ultra version 3. We're going to talk about some of the benefits of KISS Ultra as well, give you an overview of the OSD system and then at the end I will share with you some thoughts. Now just before we get into this I just want to say that they did send me this flight controller over to take a look at for free. However, I've not been paid to make this video, they've not seen this video before it's been published and as always my thoughts are entirely my own. So the first thing you will see in the box is that this new version 3 is the same iconic shape that we have from the original KISS Ultras. We have the H-frame, which is 30.5 by 30.5 mounting pattern. While the shape and size is the same, quite a few things have changed though. So this version 3 is based on the STM32H743. Still running at 480 megahertz, 2 megabytes of flash, 1.28 megabytes of RAM. It has the IIM42652 gyro, which is connected over SPI, a BMP390 barometer. It has dual BEX on board, supplying up to 2 amp on either 5 or 12 volt, and they are separate BEX. It's not one choice between the two, 5 and 12. And then you also have a big change with regards to the connectivity because now we have a USB-C port. Now, the great thing about this new version of the Ultra is that it still carries over all of the great features from the original Ultra. So it's still based on its own firmware. It has all of the standard pinouts that we had before. I'll go over them again in a moment just to make sure everyone understands what we've got. And it is based on the latest version of the firmware available from the developer. Now, there are a lot of people who really love the KISS Ultra series of flight controllers. And genuinely, I am one of them as well. The way Ultra flies it's just so nice out the box. Whilst there is no question that beta flight has improved dramatically over the last few years with how well it flies with stock settings, Ultra is probably the easiest to tune quad firmware flight controller that I have used. It is very quick and easy to get it running out of the box. And alongside that, it's got some real nice features available as well. Because remember, Ultra does have full GPS support for things like return to home, which again is things that whilst is now in beta flight has been there for quite a long time in the Ultra series. Alongside all of that, we have the usual stuff. So for instance, you have your extra motor pads for five to eight available. You've got two external serial ports on connectors, our eight pin ESC connector, which is based on the KISS wiring, not the FETTEC wiring. And whilst you should be able to pin it out straight to KISS without any problems, I highly recommend you always check your pin out just in case. As I've said, it does have those dual backs on board, as well as a dedicated current sensor pad. And it also has overcurrent protection on all of the data lines, as well as ESD protection on that new USB-C port. Now, when it comes to size and weight, as I've said, it's got a 30.5 by 30.5 mounting pattern. It is much narrower in the middle there than it is obviously lengthways. And weight wise, it is coming in at just 5.47 grams. Looking under the microscope, first of all, we have that nice new USB-C port. Now, it is mounted on the top of the board. You can see you've got your pins for that port that go through the PCB and are soldered. That should offer some real nice strength compared to the micro USB port before. And it isn't that it was delicate, but micro USB has never been one of the greatest ports. And then you can see the pads for that on the back. There we've got our STM32H7. 
looking around then the rest of this side of the board there isn't a great deal to show you actually it is amazing just how much space there is on this board how well laid out this board is you can see there is our gyro i suspect that one is we've got another ic there another one there not sure what those two are we've got some transistors and then that is pretty much it on this side of the board flipping over to the other side then we can see our barrow sensor on the bottom of the board so it is just worth taking that into account it's on the bottom not the top we've then got some protection diodes and then we've got our dual backs which are based on the ms mps t15s or mp4316s you can see the same chip on either side with the coils on each side and then we've got our filter capacitors down here one offering 5 volt one offering 12 volt up to 2 amps with regards to our pads around the controller as i've said we've got our two uarts on pads over here serial one and serial two you've got your esc pad at the bottom also on the bottom of the board there is a dedicated pad for our current sensor if you want it and then you've got all of your other pads on the side and then some dedicated pads on the bottom as well so a telemetry ground your motor five six seven and eight if you wanted to go up to eight motors another uart down here tx and rx4 and then on the top we have the rest of our main pads so you can see we have battery plus ground 12 volt v out sa ground 5 volt rx2 and tx2 and then flipping over to the other side again bat plus ground 5 volts uh, another ground vi cc led tx and rx6 and really about the only other thing to show you on this side of the board is there is a boot pad over here for the mcu as well again when you look at this board it is so well laid out all of the components are very nicely soldered on we've got our protection diodes our barrow down there it is a really nicely made flight controller one last thing i just want to mention on the pads on this flight controller as well you can see they have vias which are capped on the top and they are castellated as well which again just shows the quality that we have here on this PCB. Whilst I was showing you around this controller, you may have also noticed that there isn't that typically long, large analog OSD chip. However, don't worry, the KISS Ultra Vision 3 still fully supports analog OSD. You have your camera input, your video output, and it has one of the nicest built-in OSD systems that not only gives you your normal information, but you can actually fully configure this flight controller out the box without even having a computer every part of this is configurable via the built-in osd if you don't want to use analog though you can obviously still use digital via the uarts and if you're using one of the systems that allows you to upload an osd pack so for instance a font pack on the likes of avatar hd dji fpv wtf you can even bring in that kiss ultra font pack into that system too if you are going to use it though with the likes of dji 03 and 04 you obviously have msp display port osd but you don't have the additional graphical user interface that ultra offers either via analog or the system that does allow you to upload a custom font pack alongside all the hardware changes there's also a bunch of software improvements in ultra as well they've now added bl heli pass through which means you can now fully configure your esc from bl heli or am32 via the ultra flight controller just like you could on beta flight you've got support for immersion rc ghost crossfire version 3 improved return to home with barrow support and they have even added a fun weather station feature as i mentioned and showed briefly earlier you have all of the main configuration for ultra available via the osd here i've got it connected to avatar hd and i've got the ultra font pack installed and i've got it configured so that we get that lovely main kiss ultra osd you can see we've got that nice graphical user interface within here we have options like the fc setup ultra setup osd editor tbs crossfire settings and hardware tools under the fc setup here you will find 
all of the main controls for the flight controller. So you can see your PID settings, your rates, your TPA, your filter settings, your voltage and current settings, receiver options, AUX settings, so what you want your switches to do, serial ports, advanced settings. So here you'll have things like your debug options, your LED settings, your D shot outputs, and then your MSP OSD options. Here you can see we've got canvas avatar and MSP disarm delay set to five. Below this, we then have our ultra specific settings. So you have your OSD instruments, your units, your specifics around that, your info and alarms, your advanced HD configuration. So here I've got both transparent and extended fonts turned on. And then we've got our in-flight tuning options. There's also a built-in OSD editor that allows us to adjust all of our specific OSD options. So here you can see I'm scrolling through and then we can choose to make changes to these OSD settings if we want to. We've got our specific Crossfire settings. So if you are someone that is using Crossfire, you can configure that within this as well. And then we've also got our hardware tool settings, which allows us to do things like our receiver test. So there you can see my inputs showing on the display. We've got our motor test options, our accelerometer calibration, and then our font test, which will simply bring up every font on the screen that is available within this current font pack. There is even a playful feature called weather info that will use the barometer on board the flight controller to try and tell you what the weather is outside. Alongside the updates to Ultra with Express LRS version 4.0 onwards, you also now have the ability to configure this from within the Ultra OSD as well. For instance, you can go down to the TBS Crossfire options. Within here, it will now detect both your receiver and your transmitter. So I can do my configuration in here for the receiver. You can see we've got the options for the protocol, the SBUS failsafe, telemetry power options. And then we've got our channel and position options. And if we then go back to the main menu, we can go into our radio settings. And under here, you will find the configuration for things such as the rate. So you have the ability to set what current packet rate, your telemetry ratio, your switch mode, your linking. You've then got all of the options available on the different modes, and you can do this directly within the Ultra OSD as long as you have the latest firmware and Express RS. 4.0 onwards. You can though also configure this via the KISS Ultra web-based configurator. This not only allows you to configure the flight controller, but it also acts a bit like the instructions for it as well, even showing you all of the information about the controller. So for instance, you can plug it in on USB, connect to it, and you then can configure the flight controller via the tabs on the screen. And there's even a really cool feature around the OSD that allows you to actually bring up the OSD menu live within the web base configuration page. When it comes to setting up KISS Ultra, everything is really simple and straightforward. And as I've said already, there's lots of information and tips around each option. So for instance, when you highlight on anything, it will bring up information about each of the options. If we go under advanced and start looking at our connectors, if I click on it, it will start to even show you where the connection is located on the board and give you information about it. When it comes to setting your quad up from scratch, Ultra is really one of the simplest out there on the market today. You can simply set your receiver type, your PIDs based on either your own settings or some presets that have been built into the KISS Ultra system as well. You've got your RC AUX functions available, and then under Advanced, you've got your additional options available, such as your serial port configuration, your custom FC orientation, as well as your advanced filter settings. As I mentioned, one real nice feature is the OSD system that allows you to bring up the live OSD from the KISS Ultra system in your browser window. And again, you can do the individual configuration from that here. This is the same OSD options that are available within the actual system itself. From within here, you can even easily update the firmware without any need to download any files. You can simply select remote firmware, select the version, and then perform the update. 
Now, unfortunately, I'm in the depth of winter. It hasn't stopped raining for weeks, and I'm not going to be able to fly this at the moment. However, more than anything, I just wanted to show you what has been done with the Ultra Vision 3. Some real nice improvements here. Not fundamental, not groundbreaking, but real nice evolution, not only in the hardware, but also some nice updates in the software as well. Price-wise, the Ultra 3 is available for €90. Euros. On the 7th of December, at the point of me recording this, it isn't actually in stock, but stock does come and go get yourself on the discord if you want to make sure you get an update when they are going to be available next ultra is one of those things that those who know know you'll talk to someone and they'll give you a bit of a wry smile when you go oh yeah you're flying kiss ultra and it is a flight control system that I genuinely really do like. It flies incredibly well. And that isn't saying that Beta Flight doesn't fly well. Beta Flight is fantastic at what it does. Ultra, though, has just a number of nice little things, including the fact that it does have that return to home support. And that's been in there for a very long time as well. Now, if you're interested in getting an Ultra, there will be a link in the description. They are not always available. They are a product that becomes available in batches. And what I would say is if you are very interested in getting one, make sure you get yourself on their Discord where you will get a notification when new batches have been released. Now, if you have found this video interesting, let me know what you think down below. And if you have any comments or questions, put them down there and I will try and answer them. And finally, I just want to say, if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It really is only through the support of my patrons are able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us, please do consider checking it out. I want to say a massive thank you to every single one of my Patreons. We would not be able to do this without your support. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Look after yourself, stay safe, and I will speak to you soon.